Hi again, everyone. Uh, this time we have a video regarding version 0.20. Uh, with me, as always, Jairo Nieto, creative uh, director, chief principal designer, <laughs> headmaster. And with me, Juan Duque, our content director, the man in charge of the magic. You are wearing a shirt again. This is my most uh, elegant shirt. How many shirts do you own? Two. Okay. <laughs> so go. I already know what I can get you for Christmas. That's good. Yes. Also, if this is your most elegant shirt, there is, you know, I mean, yeah, I, the bar is pretty low. Okay, the, the bar is pretty low. We're gonna have uh, Secret Santa. <laughs> so we got some pretty cool stuff coming in this version of the game, and one of them is uh, the extravagant pass. Can you tell us a little bit about it? I know we're gonna have a video where we're gonna explore all the goodies that come with the extravagant pass. But what can you tell us about it? Uh, the extravagant pass is uh, a subscription for you guys to gain constantly a lot more rewards and get a lot more out of the game. Just worth mentioning though, beyond those like quality of life improvements that the subscription entails, you get this skin, which I'm in love with, which yeah. is the extravagant skin. It's I, it's, I, it's not only a very beautiful skin, but it's the only skin so far that has particle effects during battle. Yeah, it's quite extravagant, yes. I would say. So it, it, it fills the, the role, right? Yes, for sure. Next thing on the docket here is, we talked about it a little bit last video, but what can you tell us about mid-tier progression goals? What we wanted to create was this uh, small reward step-by-step -step that allowed players to like incrementally achieve stuff while they were climbing in power. Right out of the onboarding, mm -hmm. you will get your first reward, which is 20 gems, after you get 25 power. As you progress through through the different leagues, you're gonna get a lot of cool, of cool stuff. Regular rewards like gems, doubloons, coins. We have uh, cards, avatars that you get from reaching certain leagues, and then there's others that are pretty special, like uh, double the coins for a certain amount of time after oh, you reach that cool. reward. It's a good incentive to play the game every day too. Uh, even if you're in the lower leagues, you have something to look forward to as you climb in power. That is that is what we wanted to give you guys, uh, you know, an incentive to. We wanted to to give you the, a sense of progression, pretty much every time you you logged into the game. You, you mentioned avatars, which is a great segue to uh, pro divisions, which we also talked about a little bit. We have some pretty cool avatars for pro division. How how does that work? Well, the, the, the yeah, I agree. The avatars for pro divisions are pretty amazing. Pro divisions come after the regular league progression. Yes. On our previous version, 0 0.19, you got to League 6 and pretty much the end game was that. That you, was it, yeah. That, that was it. Uh, we wanted to create competitive space for our best players. And so now when you reach 4,000 power, you enter the first Pro Division, which is called Platinum 5. And as you progress in power up to 10,000 power, you can uh, keep progressing from Platinum to Diamond Ooh, and Master, yes. and then at 10,000 you get Grandmaster. And when the season ends, depending on your highest ranking, you will get an avatar, a proof of how good Pretty you are sweet, in this yeah. game, and not just an avatar, but you guys also design. Yeah, we created like these really nice frames for the avatar in case you wanna go back to one of your old avatars, you still get the frame that tells everybody you're a pro player. So you can have any avatar in the game, but you, your frame will it's always go like, and Grandmaster, that's right. Scrub. That's right. You it's know, a, do not emote me. Do not give me the kiss my ass emote because <laughs> I'm, I'm a master. <laughs> don't get, don't get people with the pro uh, frames enraged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or, yeah. Or do it. Or do it. Do it. Do you taunt a lot? But I used to taunt a lot before. You used to taunt. But a lot. now, now you guys are getting much, much better at it. I used to be. In the last video, I mentioned I was number 10 in the world. In this video, I'm just going to say I lost a couple of spots. When I did, I raged quite okay. a lot. I've heard you rage, yes. Yeah. The office shakes. But but now that I'm calm, it's, I'm very happy because that means our players are getting better. Your guys are coming up with such great strategies. But here goes. Whoever figures out my my username in World War Do and puts it in the comments, the first one gets 80 gems. Oh, let's give them 80 gems. 80, 80 gems to whoever guesses what Juan Duque is, our content director, ha in-game handle is. It, and, and you guys could probably use the 80 gems. I could use 80 gems. <laughs> you, what would you spend your 80 gems on? You know, lately I like to spend gems in air chests, air surprise chests. And to speed, speed them up, yeah. Especially the epic I'm, ones. I'm more of a monkey guy myself. I mean, if you like to play with your monkeys. <laughs> <laughs>
my, my monk is very professional. <laughs> now let's talk a little bit about the units for this version 0.20, the person eating plan. Can you tell us a little bit? The person eating plan, when you play it, appears burrowed on the ground, but both players can see where it's buried. And if any unit approaches it, it just pops out and it's it up. You're able to attack the plant. If you oh, kill okay. the plant before it finishes digesting the unit, then the unit pops out a little bit mangled, <laughs> yes, uh, but alive. It's a, I think it's a really good counter to heavy hitting units. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Rex comes to mind. Clear her off the map, even for a few seconds, even if the plant gets killed, it's actually a pretty cost effective yeah. strategy. It's, it's a cool unit. We also talked a little bit last time about uh, this uh, spell called Nightfall. Briefly, what can you tell us yeah, about that's, it? Yeah, that's one of my favorites. As we said, right, turns the, the map from day to night and it reduces the effect range and attack range of all units that are currently on the map. The fact that range has been reduced definitely creates a new meta game for the next eight seconds. Units that are usually vulnerable to range or to getting killed by ranged units become a lot stronger during that time, during nighttime. It's definitely a fun card and I see a lot of combinations and a lot of strategies emerging from that mechanic. Next, let's talk about this building, a new building coming up called the Igloo. So the Igloo is similar to the bunker in the sense that it allows the commander to enter it. So the mm -hmm. commander can hide within his Igloo and inside he has these snowballs. And he uses these snowballs to throw two enemies and freeze them. And remember, frozen units in our yeah. game take double damage. So it actually allows for the commander to stop in their tracks a dangerous enemy, say the tank arena, for example. Yeah. The range of the igloo, though, is it's shorter than the range of the bunker. Okay. So they, the bunker is a lot more offensive, while the igloo is a lot more defensive. There are so many ways in our game yeah. to use these units that uh, I wouldn't be surprised if I start seeing offensive igloo strategies. For sure, so many combinations uh, with this new this new building. Last but not least, this new unit called the Greevil. Uh, Greevil uh, is like the Doctor Death's Igor. Yeah. Uh, he's been his lowly assistant. Is yes, <laughs> and he's assisted a lot of his poison experiments. Usually as a subject. You can tell. Uh, yeah, that's why. Yeah, he used to be with eight feet tall and <laughs> have blonde hair. And now he's a little, little <laughs> he's bit. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a little bit worse for wear, but he. he Dr. Death finally figured out a way to strap on him a uh, dough generating machine. Oh, cool. uh, not the latest version, because this one's still manual, apparently. Okay. So every few seconds, Gribble will generate dough, since loyal. he's so loyal mm -hmm. and faithful. He will follow the commander anywhere he goes. Uh, so you actually have to be mindful of where your commander yeah. is standing, because Gribble will follow you. He's not super strong, he doesn't have a lot of health, so he's a little bit easy to take out. Okay. Uh, and he's a little expensive, too. You don't want him to die before you at least get your money back. Last but not least, something that we at the other department don't really see, but it's more behind the scenes, uh, the stuff that comes from your brain. And uh, it's more about the outstanding balance changes to this version. We constantly look at how popular units are and their win rate in the different leagues to see you know, if, if there's like any red flags on a unit that's too overpowered or too underused. Uh, one thing that we were not entirely happy with was how the units, particularly the ones in League One, tapered off a little bit towards yeah. the, the higher end leagues. That's true. And we know a lot of people invest a lot of time <laughs> and resources in, in upgrading, upgrading them, them and, and actually adding them into their strategies. We boosted Buck, Major Fire, the Piranhas, and the Beast a little bit. Mm -hmm. Major Fire got a health boost, the Beast got a little bit of a damage boost, and all these units uh, have different interactions within them. They sort of play out like a little bit of rock, paper, scissor. Mm -hmm. We wanted to keep that even in the later leagues, yeah. One interaction that wasn't all there, especially in the lower leagues, was uh, that Rex, once he had, was pretty much, you know, game over for a lot of players. We still want Rex to be very powerful, but the beasts, if left alone, they can take down Rex pretty fast now. The beasts are easily shot down, like Buck takes care of them in less than a second. It's about what you're paying attention to on the map and what your decisions are and where your commander is positioned and what are what is your current strategy right now. Mm -hmm. That will allow for certain players to actually take down Rex and not lose the game just because they yeah. catch, you know, yeah. a, a little bit more about the, the fight between the commanders and the towers, right? And so good for the lower leagues and also the later leagues because it's nice to have all the units relevant no matter which league you're playing. Definitely. Uh, okay, well, that, that that's it for this video. Do you have any questions? I'm wondering... 
about the shirt you're gonna give me. I don't know. I, I, it's going to be for for videos. I don't know how fancy. Do, do not get your hopes up very much. Uh, Remember, guys, we have a Discord, and we, we love do. we love reading the comments and the feedback. We do that too. Yeah. Uh, or in the comments in this video, a lot of the decisions that we make are also based on the feedback from you guys, our players. So keep the feedback coming. We love to hear from you, and that's it for now. Over and out. Thank you, everyone. Now we're ready. Uh, uh, Don't need the yellow eyes. <laughs> yeah.